Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Ben Danun with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research and I need to speak to my brethren in Israel very seriously about the events that are going to transpire in Israel in the very near future. There are some things that the Lord has revealed to my heart, things that I think that you really need to know. And although you may not believe me at this time, you will in time come to understand that the words that I'm going to share with you now are indeed true. I will also touch on things in this video a little later in the video regarding the redemption of Israel down through time, especially over the last 2,000 years, and be a little bit more concise about some of the things that perhaps were misunderstood in a previous video that I did. As the Lord began to deal with me, He began to deal with me about the events that are taking place in Israel. And as we see Israel right now in the conflict between Gaza and um, with Hamas there in Israel, the battle that is, that is going on there, I happened to catch a, um, a video that Barry Chamish was in no doubt after we had done the interview with Barry Chamish here on uh, Israeli News Live. And in this video, he said that he is very concerned that the war that is happening now with Hamas is only going to escalate and Hezbollah from Lebanon will get involved eventually, Syria and maybe other countries as well. Naturally, we see the, the riots and the protests all around the world that are taking place. And so Barry was saying that this would bring an end to Israel as we know it. And he said, you might as well just go ahead and get used to it. There will be no state of Israel as we know it today. As I listened to his words, something came on my heart. And I realized that what he's saying may have some profound impact on what's truth. I've said to you guys over and over and over that God is resetting the stage in Israel. And I'm saying this to my Jewish brethren. I'm saying it to you, my brethren, my rabbinical brethren that are listening to this video. God is, re -going, to, is going to reset the stage like it was 2,000 years ago. He's going to reset the stage like it was 3,500 years ago. Or 4,000 years ago, actually, 3,900 years ago, probably to be more precise. He's going to reset the stage in Israel when Rome was over Israel when Yeshua walked the very shores of Galilee and Rome was the authority of the country. God is resetting this stage up because when Yeshua was here, he was rejected by our forefathers as being the Mashiach. He was handed over to the Romans to be crucified. And of course, he was crucified. Just as it was stated in the prophet Daniel, chapter 9, where it says that the Messiah, the prince, the anointed prince, the anointed Mashiach would be cut off, not for himself. He's actually being cut off for the entire world. It's one reason why I try to say to my Christian friends that you have to understand Israel is a called people to be a priestly nation, to offer sacrifices unto God. And in order for us to offer sacrifices unto God, that also included the greatest sacrifice that could have been offered, his own son. This is why we see Abraham, when he is getting ready to take his own son's life, Isaac, and the angel catches his hand and says, Stay your hand, Abraham. I see you're willing to do it. 
Because see why? Abraham, my brethren, understand Abraham is a type of Israel. He is the father of Israel. He's our forefather. And it was showing that we were called for this purpose. This is why God did the test for Abraham. He wanted to see that his children had the ability to take and kill their only begotten son. The begotten son of God. If Abraham was willing to take his own son's life, then God knew that it was in his genes, that it would be in his DNA that his children would be able to carry out the command of Almighty God. And also what's so interesting in the story of Abraham, Abraham could not understand for the life of him why God would want this to be done. But he was willing to do it. Neither does Israel understand today why Yeshua came and why he had to die. It was, it was to redeem man back to God. The only way we can have the relationship that God wanted to have with us as Jews on Mount Sinai, when he had us wash ourselves and cleanse ourselves, men and women and children, and we came before the mountain of God and God came down, he wanted that relationship. It was a marriage ceremony, but we got afraid. They talk about a wife having cold feet at a wedding. Well, Israel was the bride, and she was afraid. And the odd thing is, God knew that it wasn't going to happen, because why? He had not released the Spirit of God. It had not been released to come back upon us. Isn't it kind of ironic that at the same place where God comes down is also where Moses smites the rock that the water comes forth? Now, God did tell him to speak to the rock. Why? Because the rock was to only be smitten once, and that was 38 years before that particular time when God said, speak to the rock, that God took Moses and the elders of Israel out, and they smoked the rock that the waters came forth. Now, 38 years later, also showing that Israel would never accept Yeshua when he come the first time. Okay? He wouldn't accept him. In fact, he would be smitten of God, or smitten by Israel. He would be judged by the elders and smitten by Israel. That the water came forth. And then God says to Moses 38 years later, He said, speak to the rock that it bring forth its waters. But angrily, Moses went out and smote the rock and said to the people, you rebels, must we bring forth water out of this rock? It's speaking of the second coming of Yeshua. And oddly enough, the rock is struck again. But there is a reason for that as well. Not that Israel strikes him again, but this time. The Bible says that the Gentiles, Paul writes about this, you crucify him afresh and put him to an open shame. It says about the Gentiles in the latest Sion uh, that they would be blind, naked, and miserable and would not know it. So there could be volumes that could be spoke about this. But you have to understand, my brethren, this is what God was doing. This is redemption. This was when Yeshua come. He had to be smitten in order for the life of God to come out of him. That's why he said to the woman at the well, if you knew who it was that was speaking to you, you'd ask me for a drink and I would give you water. You don't come here anymore. He was talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that was inside of him, the very life of God. He even claimed, he said, I am the tree. He says, I am the life, the truth, and the way. In other words, he's the word, and the way back to the life is through him. It's, it was in him. The very life of Almighty God was in him. Do you understand, my Christian friends? If it hadn't have been for the Jewish people, obedient like Abraham was, there would be no Holy Ghost for you today. Now, see, let me make one thing clear. Brother Aaron even suggested this to me as well. 
You have to understand, I don't believe that Jewish people that commit adultery and that lie and steal and break all the commandments of God, I do not believe that the blood of Yeshua is atoning for those that just blatantly live any kind of carefree life. Not at all. But Paul speaks of a remnant of Israel even into this day. And the scripture speaks of a remnant that he saves in the final days. He's always had a remnant of Israel. The difference is, is because they never could see who he was. Because the Bible says that God blinded them. And because of their blindness, he opened the Gentiles' eyes so they could see. So the hour is for you. This is why Paul in Romans 11 says so eloquently there that they were the natural branches. They were cut out of the tree, but they're able to be regrafted back in again. Now, before I move into the things that the Lord showed me and, and my Jewish brethren, I think it's good for you to hear this. It is redemption. It is what is going to happen for you as well. Let me just share, though, something because I mentioned these scriptures, but perhaps you didn't quite see what I was speaking about on this. Revelation in the fifth seal, I spoke to you and I said that the fifth seal represents the Jewish people. It says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little while, a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now, I mentioned to you that because very, very common here, that they're crying out for vengeance shows that it's Jewish people. It's not Christians. Jesus taught the Christian people. He says, you know, turn the other cheek. If your brother compels you to go a mile, go with him too. If he tries to come and take your coat, take, let him take your cloak. When they were crucifying him and pulling his beard out and spitting upon him, he said, let him alone. God told him to do it. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. I shared with you how the scripture says that if a man, the question came up, if he doesn't know that he's doing wrong, that God said, do I, will I not consider it? And do I not ponder the heart? You see, God knows who's trying to serve him. Now, the thing is, he says here, the souls of them that were that were slain for the they were they were killed for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now, some people said that's Christians. Well, let's look at Revelation chapter 15 real quick. Go to verse 2, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. See, they're identified here as believers in Yeshua. I believe it's actually, uh, it could be a mixture of both Christians and Jews that ended up believing in Yeshua. Because they sing the song of Moses, no doubt Moses must have returned as one of the witnesses in order for them to learn the song of redemption. What is the song of Moses? I will sing that I have gotten victory over the horse and over his rider. The Antichrist spirit. See, Moses and Elijah, that's what they come to do. God prophesied through Moses that he would, go, he would destroy or he would have the victory over the horse and his rider. One horse, one rider. It's all in future tense. I shared that with you just recently. That's in uh, uh, Exodus chapter 15. Remember, I will sing unto the Lord that he has gotten victory over the horse and over his rider and has hurled them into the sea. So 
he must come back and they're singing that song of redemption so undoubtedly the antichrist has been destroyed and they're on a sea of glass like the red sea it's opening up the heavens open up like a scroll they're going through the mingled with fire is the judgments of god coming down and they're like shadrach meshach and abednego walking through the fiery judgments of god and not even being touched and they sing the song of the lamb which is yeshua so john is not afraid and also, look, watch what it says here. Um, I'm sorry, something else here. So anyway, but over here, he just says that they were killed for, 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 their, uh, for the testimony that they held, see, in, uh, in the fifth seal, and uh, they, for the testimony which they held, and for the, of course, for the word of God. Well, see, the Jewish people, they, the ones that love God, Keep the word of God. Now remember, like I said, it doesn't mean that every single person who claims that they're Jewish would be there or that the blood of Yeshua would atone for them. But if he said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. And if he doesn't apply his blood to them, you know, it, let me just share with you the rationale behind this because most all the people that watch the videos here are supporters of Israel. You stand with the Jewish people. Think of the irony of what you're doing. If you have the idea that if Jews don't personally with their own mouth say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and confess that in order for, their to for them to have salvation in that manner there, then you think that they're going straight to hell. Why would you stand with Israel then? If God says about Israel, whoever curses you will be cursed, and whoever blesses you will be blessed, then if they're all going to hell for the last 2,000 years, then they're not, then God is cursing them. He's going against his own word. How could God curse something he's already blessed? Oh, but yet he is punishing Israel for her sins. And you have to understand there's a big difference between punishing Israel for the sins that she's done. So therefore, and because that they're blind, and Jesus even made the statement himself, if you, he said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. And the Bible clearly says that they're blinded. For what? For your sake. For your sake. So I just ask you, really search the Word of God. I don't do this. I don't say these things. I realize what I say to you guys is not popular. And I'm not here for a popularity contest. I'm here to tell you the truth. Now I want to share with you what's going to happen in Israel. And this is what has saddened my heart, but yet also it brings joy in my soul to know what's going to take place now. So as I listened to Barry Chumish in his uh, lecture that he was giving, and I don't know where it was at, I just watched it, it's about a two and a half hour uh, lecture. And I think we've posted it on our Facebook page, if not, I will post it there for you. But Barry says, Israel will not be the way you know it now. Now, I can't say exactly the way Barry says, so I'm not saying that I agree with him, but let me just tell you this here. The Lord revealed to my heart earlier today, Judas sold Jesus for 20 pieces of silver. There's someone in the Israeli government, and it could be more than one, but I believe it's one person, and I believe his name is Shimon Peres, that has sold Israel out who knows for what, maybe $20 million for all I know. But they've sold Israel out. And when they sold, sold Israel out, then if you'll notice, he was taken then to be judged by the rabbis. And once the rabbis had judged him, then they turned around and handed him over to the Romans to be killed. This is exactly what I have been watching happen over the, over the years now here, especially here 
recently. Now, when I say the rabbis have handed them over to Rome, you have to understand not all the rabbis by no means have any desire to see Rome come into Israel. But there is a handful of rabbis, and I have shown you the videos of them that have been courting the Jewish people, excuse me, courting the Vatican. These are your rabbis that have taken and have betrayed Israel into the hands of the Romans. Why was it in 1967 that Israel gave up the Temple Mount? Why is it that the rabbis say that the Jews cannot go on the Temple Mount? God gave you back the land and you turn around and hand it to the enemies. Moshe Dayan, who at one time was a great general of Israel, but turned around and as a coward, hands the Temple Mount back to our enemies. You know why? Because Rome has been trying to control the shots all along. Just like when Yeshua was here, Rome was already there in Israel. It's not that, that Israel is, is not that Israel's been a free nation for the last 50 years or so. We've been under a Roman secret occupation for quite some time. In fact, in 1993, Shimon Perez made it official that Rome had a lot of say in the country. That's why so many people mysteriously die in Israel. They don't want you to know this. But as Israel is sold out to the Romans, Rome will once again bring their forces in. This time it'll be a United Nations force. In fact, our sister Esther pointed out that in the Golan right now, as she just got back home to Israel, there's a lot of UN presence up in the Golan. Wonder why? I know Brother Gary had mentioned to me that he saw in a dream there would be a lot of UN forces or UN peacekeepers, I should say, I think is the way Brother Gary put it, up in that Golan area. And if I'm not mistaken, he said that he saw a chemical attack that would come. Kind of interesting as you see these things play out. Then the Lord showed me something else tonight. And this is what I wanted to share with you. One, we will be handed over into the Romans, and now you're going to see the Romans take full control. You'll see Micah chapter 4 begin to play out, as God says to the children of Israel, as they're in travail. You will go out of the city. I don't know about all of Jerusalem, but I know in each Jerusalem there won't be any Jews there whatsoever. You'll be in the fields like refugees. Just like they did to you in Gaza. You have to understand, God gave Israel this land. But the Jews that are really not Jews living in Israel that say they are, the one that the Vatican and the Jesuits set up, the ones, for the most part, are running the country. They've been trying to call the shots. But just remember... God is still in control. He brought Israel there. Even though the little devil thought he's going to have his way, God has been using the devil all along to fulfill his own plan. So God is going to have his own way. But seeing Satan was too stupid to figure this out, and I know he'll be listening to this video as well. He sends all of his little critics here to try to derail what's said to you because he doesn't want you to know what the truth really is. So... For my rabbinical brethren, and of course the devil, you'll get to hear too now because now God's going to allow you to know what this has been about to start with. I want to just share with you here from the story of Joseph because that's where the key is about what's happening in Israel very soon. By the way, you're on the brink of the 70th week of Daniel beginning. If it hasn't begun yet, it will begin any day, any week, or any month, but I believe it's within weeks away if it hasn't already started. And I don't say that to upset people that believe in the rapture. God knows I'm, in, I'm for it any time he wants to come. He said here in um, 
And as one of them opened his sack, okay, this is when they, they let's see, okay. We're going to, uh, I believe it's chapter 42 of Genesis. Yes, chapter 42. If you look at verse 3, he says, And Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, uh, Yaakov, sent not with his brethren. For he said, Lest mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came for the famine. By the way, it may kind of sound kind of awkward because Benjamin really does not represent the children of Israel. When I say, or the house of Israel, the house of Israel are the Jews that are still in exile that have not come home. But he does represent the house of Israel. And by the way, the reason he does is because God has not allowed the house of Israel to return home as of yet. Notice Zechariah chapter 12. I believe it's in verse 7. I'm just paraphrasing that he first will gather the tents of Judah first. Why? Because it was the house of Judah that betrayed Yeshua. And he has to deal with them first. But in this case here, Yaakov or Jacob does not want Benjamin to go in the event that something would befall him that evil or mischief might befall him. And God is the same way with the house of Israel. He's dealing with the sins of the house of Judah first. That's why the scripture says, He that is first shall be first, and he that is last shall be, excuse me, he that is last shall be first, and he that is first shall be last. It's speaking of Israel. So what happens though, they... Um, God has, uh, or Jacob holds Benjamin back, just the same God has held the house of Israel and has not allowed the house of Israel to go home to Israel as of yet, so that mischief does not befall her. Because she must be there, all the ones that are anointed and called of God to make up the remnant of Israel when he reveals himself to his children. They must be there. So he says here, he doesn't let him go. Now as we move down a little bit, going to verse 7, halfway through, and Joseph knew, uh, this is when they come down there into the land of Canaan to buy food, and Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not, and Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them. Now that Israel is in their homeland, Yeshua is watching everything. He's there. He knows what's going on. He's there. And I guarantee you, just today, when Sister Esther talked to me on the phone, she spoke to me about her neighbor, a Jewish woman that comes to her. They're talking and says, you know, something strange happened to me. She said, you know, I do not believe that Yeshua, meaning Jesus, is Messiah. She said, but I had a dream about him. And he was walking along with me. And he told me an event about your daughter. Well, the odd thing was, what she dreamed actually came to pass. You see, God is already, Yeshua is in Israel amongst his people. They just don't know it yet. And the odd thing is, notice in the story of Joseph, Pharaoh's there as well. But they have no idea who Joseph really is. Even Pharaoh, in this case here, the Pope of Rome, doesn't know that Joseph is there. That's one reason why, too, in Ezekiel chapter 35, when God speaks about them wanting to take both nations, that's Rome wanting to take both Israel and the West Bank or the Palestinian uh, area that was given to them, says that the Lord was there. Well, why does it say that? Because God has Joseph right among them as a type of Yeshua right there among them with Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is a type of the Pope. So anyway, he doesn't reveal himself to his brethren, but instead he begins to accuse them of spies. He said unto them, you are spies to see the debt nakedness of the land. Are you come? And they said to him, no, my Lord. But to buy food for thy servants come. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. 
And he said to them, No, but you are come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Thy servants are twelve. We are brothers, sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with, with our father, and the other is no more. And Yosef said to them, That is what I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. Isn't it interesting? They still claiming it, claim him as their brother. Now, it's interesting. They didn't want to claim him as a brother early on, but now they do. Israel's the same way. Think about it, my Jewish brothers. Never wanted to claim Yeshua as, as your own brother back 2,000 years ago. In fact, the rabbis there called him everything. He even said that he said, isn't he a Samaritan, trying to claim that he wasn't Jewish. But here we are in the days of coming up, and you're fulfilling the very scriptures that you read. Now you're saying, no, Jesus was a Jew. You tell everybody, he was a Jew. He was a Jew. You try to say he's not God, but you say he's a Jew. And they're testifying the same. We have a brother. Anyhow, though, there's something strange happens, though. He says to them, Hereby you shall be proved by the life of Pharaoh. You shall not go out of here unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you and let him fetch your brother, and you shall keep, be kept in the prison that your words may be proved, whether there be any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And he put them all together into custody for three days. And Joseph said to them on the third day, this do and live, I fear God. If you, be, you are true, let one of your brothers be bound in the house of your confinement. And you go, carry corn for the famine of your houses, but bring your youngest brother to me. So shall your words be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so, and they said one to another, Truly we are guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. My brother's sister, the three days that they were in the prison, God is going to have Israel under the prison of the Roman authority for three years. That's what's going to happen. During the time that Israel's whole country will change, this will not necessarily happen right now with Gaza, but it is soon to happen. When all these other nations begin to attack Israel, with Hezbollah joins in, or Syria, or any of the rest of them, and Israel becomes overwhelmed, you have to understand right now they're cutting funding off to Israel. A Jewish friend of mine could not even send, could not wire money into their own account into Israel because some kind of laws here that have been done do that to stop that. The same I hear is happening over to the Jews in Europe. They can't even get the money from their banks to go to Israel with it. They're doing these things to force the Jews. They'll bring a United Nations force in, just like Shimon Perez said they would do. Israel will still be a country, will still be a people, but we won't have the same freedoms. It will be a different, it'll be a foreign power in there that will begin to make the Jewish people's lives like a hell on earth. You have to understand what is, what is hard for the Jews when we don't have control of the Wailing Wall any longer. When the Tomb of David, sacred places for the Jewish people are no longer, we're no longer allowed to have the access. Believe me, we will begin to do just like the Jews did here, his brethren. Notice they begin to acknowledge, did we not see the anguish? They begin to realize their mistakes. Could it be that this also is when the two witnesses come on the scene? Isn't it interesting, though? It'll be three years. Now, remember, Rome, according to the Christian Bible, let me read this for the sake of my Jewish brethren. Rome takes and treads the holy city, that is Jerusalem, underfoot for 40 and two months. Chapter 11 of Revelation. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. 
Okay? They'll tread that ground. Now, that's like control. The Bible says footsteps are possession. This is what's going to drive Israel to her knees to wonder, where did we go wrong? Notice though, to Joseph, after three days, he releases them. in order to go back and get their brother. This is when the house of Israel comes home. They will come home. This is also getting near the time when Israel, see Israel starting to wake up. They go back. And when they come back with their brother, then he reveals himself to them. That's when that happens. In the middle of the week, Yeshua makes himself known to Israel, just like Joseph made himself known to, to the Jews. When? When they go get their brother, when all the 12 tribes are once together again, and he reveals himself to them. But first, they acknowledge their sins. And the house of Judah has to do that because they were the ones that handed him over to the, to, the, to, the, to the Roman authorities to be crucified. My brethren, you may not believe this, but had you not done this, there would be no eternal life. Yeshua said to us before he left, how often I would have hovered you as a hen with her own brood, but you would not. He said, your house is left to you desolate until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He wasn't talking about the temple. When he talked about the temple is when he said there will not be one stone left here upon another. And there's not one stone of the temple sitting on that temple mount. But what he did say is he said to us that the time would come here. He said our house would be left desolate until we say blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Do you realize right now, my brother, sister, anyone that, can, that, that is willing to say any Jew anywhere that is willing to say, Blessed is he, Yeshua, for he was the one that came in the name of the Lord. Then your house no longer has to be desolate. Your heart no longer has to be desolate. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost, the very life of Almighty God that we've been looking for. We wanted to know the way back. He has that way back. God bless you.